Today we're looking at the art of Jaime Hernandez, The Secrets of Life and Death. This is a monograph that uh, Abrams Comic Arts put out, and Jaime Hernandez is a favorite on our channel. We did a shoot interview with him in uh, the sort of distant past on Cartoonist Kayfabe, but we've looked at a lot of Love and Rockets comics, Woe Nelly, what was the name of his, uh, the Queens of the Ring? Art Queens book, of the Ring. Queens of the Ring art book. Lots of Jaime Hernandez coverage, uh, but we haven't looked at the monograph, so dig into all those videos and uh, check this one out. Welcome to your favorite comic book YouTube channel, Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And it is the art of Jaime Hernandez under the microscope today, but we got to let you guys know about Cartoonist Kayfabe Comic Book Christmas in July. This is the last Saturday in July, and we are going to be taking a bunch of comic book doubles. We're going to be taking our comp copies that we get from publishers, and we're filling the free little lending libraries in our neighborhoods with comics. This is the true free comic book day. Last year, more than 1,000 people participated in the event. This year, we hope that uh, more than 10,000 people participate in it, and uh help increase comic book awareness. The King Kayfabers on our Patreon get all of these videos before anybody else, thus mitigating the Kayfabe effect. And without further ado, Jimmy, let's take a look at The Art of Jaime Hernandez, The Secrets of Life and Death, uh, by Todd Hignight, intro by Ellison Beckdale, Charlie Kochman, editor over there at Co Abrams Comic Arts. Doing the Lord's work with these uh, beautiful art monographs. I... Did they just not sell? Because like they were doing them one one every year, and then uh, they just uh, they just quit doing it. I'll tell you what. If that's the case, then all of you guys watching, if you don't have them, you may be able to pick them up for a good price. It's designed much more kind of simp simplistically than, for instance, the Klaus one. But it's so appropriate because Jaime is such a pen and ink guy. He's a comic maker. He doesn't do too much outside stuff. And I love these end papers where you have I do too. the pencil mm. sketch. And then you have that sublime finish, and yeah. you see what it turns into. Like, Absolutely let's hold stunning. Let's up there right there like that. That's fucking cool as hell. It's amazing to me how different the pencils to the inks are. Right. Because sometimes, you know, like, inkers are called tracers. But in this case, like, both versions just drawing. Absolutely. Just, just by one of the master drawers. And one of the unsung heroes in this, I believe, is Jordan Crane, who helped with some of the production and, and uh, you know, getting some of the... Detail shots are getting the artwork to look the best it can in reproduction. Yeah, nice. Yeah, because like to this day, I don't think that uh, these guys, her, um, Jaime or Gilbert, I don't think they scan anything. Like they, I was at the Fantagraphics house when a, a copy of Bl an issue of Blubber came in in a, like a Wells padded Manila envelope that contained all the original artwork. This is Jaime's Sunday Funnies New York Times page. I, uh, you know, weekly strip that was in in the Sunday paper, and I believe it was reprinted in uh, one of the volumes of the man, one of the Love and Rockets series, maybe issue one of the Square Bound. Yeah, I can't remember which number, but yeah, it was definitely reproduced there. And uh, colors on this, Steve Wiseman, and I'm sure working closely with Jaime. Yeah, yeah, another, some LA, another Los Angeles, some LA boys, Hollywood kids. This video is brought to you by the Cartoonist Kayfabe Patreon. There are three different levels to suit all of your needs. At the King Kayfaber top level, you will get access to all of our videos first and earliest to help curb the Kayfabe effect. You'll be the first one in line to buy those books. And at the King Kayfaber level, you get to sit in on our recording sessions. So welcome to the Brain Trust. It is also brought to you by the books that we make. The books that you can get from me include Hulk Grand Design, The Plain Janes, and Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive. These are all available currently in print. My upcoming releases include Street Angel Princess of Poverty, which will collect all of the Street Angel comics not in Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive, and True Crime Funnies, my most recent self-published comic book. You can get this at my Patreon or at my website. Ed Piscor has a big year coming up, starting with the hip-hop family tree Omnibus, coming out this fall. You can pre-order that and put your name on a copy now. It collects all the Hip Hop Family Tree comics in one handsome volume along with 140 extra pages. So reserve that one today. X-Men Grand Design. All three volumes of X-Men Grand Design will be collected in one trade paperback this fall. Again, pre-order that one today. Some of these Grand Designs have gone out of print, so this is a way for you to read X-Men Grand Design conveniently. And the third season of Red Room Crypto Killers is currently being published. You can get that at your local comic book shop. There are also two trade paperback volumes in print and available for order wherever you buy books and comics. And now back to our video. It's so funny to see like the square format. 
kind of the one of the bizarre. Yeah, there would have been a masthead up there, and then it became that design challenge of like, how do we how do we print this stuff? How do we publish this stuff? So each of the different volumes looks so different. Like I don't know that the Seth one ever got printed. I I, I I'm not sure, but the landscape, Mister Wonderful was Dan Klaus, the big kind of square book of uh, one of the last Acme novelties was uh, was the Chris Ware. This was in that square format in the issue of Love and Rockets. It's almost like the format dictated was dictated by this strip. It's always interesting to see his work in color because it doesn't often appear that way. Yeah. Yeah, because he, like, he still uses so much black. You know, he still thinks in black and white completely. But they do well in doing the flat color, which just makes that black another color. The only way. Yeah. It's the only way. And this is the stuff that's so much fun in this book. Yeah. It's weird to say that. It's almost like the non-comic stuff is the fun, but it but it really is. It's where you get behind the scenes of how things develop, and uh, and they do a good job, I think, of tying it in. You know, like we just saw a bunch of family photos of young Hernandez and uh, and his brothers, and then you get to see him doing kid strips. Totally. Look at this stuff, dude. Oh, jeez. As a kid, I mean, this is a virtuoso talent. It like, really we're going to see stuff that he did as a, as a kid, and. Uh, you know, it's this is strong work. If you see a kid do something like this, it must be nurtured. Like this is this is a uni unicorn behavior. Look, man, it's a death ray. Yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, totally. I'm seeing all, all kinds of characters, man, like Wonder Twins and Flintstones characters. This is really neat to me too. Is I feel like these guys have been talking, the Hernandez brothers have been talking about these various influences that were so far outside of the norm of what people had respect for. Maybe, maybe not, uh, you know, Uncle Scrooge and Carl Barks, but I think by and large, like people weren't going Herbie or Archie is like something of virtue, yeah. especially in like mainstream comics. Totally. And it's caught up. You know, yeah. like they've been talking this way forever, and now we accept it and recognize, like, okay, yeah, Harry Lucy, and, you know, you find these places that make sense, but they were always the guys that were championing that. How cool, man. It's neat. Just such a solid cartoonist from day one. Yeah. And yeah. then just getting deeper and deeper. I was going to say, you go from like the kid version of his character designs to like, okay, the more, the, the older version now as he's getting further along in and his life and his draftsmanship. This is them trying to break into fanzines. Yeah. And once again, wrestling, you know, it's, it's the stuff that it just wasn't cool for so long, but didn't stop them from engaging with it. Right. And now it's kind of caught up. This is one of my favorite pieces in the whole book, dude. Just a total mind blowing comp drawing composition notebook. Yeah, it's like Christopher Lee <laughs> from the Hammer movies, you know. Uh, Nineteen seventy six. You know, it's it's you. We all got these notebooks when when we were kids. You know, you're handed out your little composition notebook. Even using like, oh, I got a little bit of space here at the bottom. It, it shouldn't be that good at that age. <laughs> right. Like, it really shouldn't. We all had those notebooks. And none of us had notebooks that looked like that. And you know what, man? This we, is gorgeous. Like, this could be published. We were looking at uh, an issue of Comics Journal, and one of the ads was talking about um, fanzines for, for Rocket's Blast. And I, I realized it was Rocket's Blast, Jaime mentions in our shoot interview, that is where his first printed works show up. He's a very singular talent, too, in that from early on, you can see his hand. Absolutely. You know, it goes on to mature a bit, right. but it's still like a lot of, it's recognizable. Totally. And it's kind of the way he does storytelling. You know, like he's always stuck with those characters. When he does the New York Times uh, piece, you know, it's still going to kind of fit within his continuity, his life work. Yeah. Yeah, it's astounding. Man, dude, he gave, he gave me one of these things. We did a video on uh, the proto works of all our favorite cartoonists. Gave me one of those things, man, and I shook like a like a girl. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a holy grail. Memphis, Tennessee, never forget it. Jerry Lawler was with an eye shot. <laughs> did you hold it up in front of Jerry Lawler? And Look what like, I got, Jerry. And he was like, "Kid, fuck you! I got the Batmobile right here. <laughs> yeah, I'm riding home in the Batmobile." <laughs> I love these comics. This is this is why I like this volume so much for for just so much proto material. Like check this out in the old fanzines, dude. Draw Nova, Marv Wolfman's character. Yeah, it was until he gave it to Marvel. Yeah, I guess so. If it's in eighty one, some Alex Toth. I love seeing like these these pulls of the cartoons and the cartoonists that influence him. Yeah, and you see it, and it makes so much sense. A hundred percent. 
the old house ad. <laughs> also, the, the images of these guys, they seem so cool. They don't seem like they should be in comics. Far cooler than like anybody in comics. Far cooler. With far cooler influences and, and not try to put it into the book, man. So that, that's what gives it its rich context. Spare lines, but still got that lighting, you know? Pretty astounding. There goes your petty bone joint, man. The Nervous Breakdown EP. Great record. You would We would not know who Black Flag is if it wasn't for the petty bone artwork. And there's the bros version, man. The Jaime version. We've done up to issue four of Love and Rocket so far, man. I'm sort of inspired to uh, pull another one off the rack, Jimmy. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Long overdue. With them dangly earrings, dude. <laughs> From issue two. I, I read and reread those issues so many times. I just love that, that this old work is sprinkled throughout. You know, we're nearly at page 100 and we're getting stuff that we just have never, ever, ever, ever seen before. Yeah, what a prodigy that he's doing that kind of work early on. And it's neat to see a flyer like this that's your black and white photocopy on red paper. Right. Super simple and cheap. Going to become the greatest comic book cover formula, you know, of all time. Totally. But you can kind of see it there. The right. germ of the idea. And the energy of the punk scene in his work, too, is kind of astounding if you think of what his work looks like now with the clean lines and yeah. the just solid blacks. It's hard to imagine that that kind of style can capture the punk aesthetic too. It's crazy how early this this is, and and just like how solid of a composition that is. That is a phenomenal e composition. Even the fact of like off centering the circle and stuff, like like I feel like Mignola will center a circle, but just like having it off to the side, like everything about it. It's as good as you can get with black and white art. It's true. Do you ever talk to him about Toth? Like, did they meet? Did he? Did they have any communication? I just I'd be don't so remember. curious to see. Like, Toth had to be impressed with what what he's putting down. I remember publicly, like you, it was it was readable. Uh, Toth singing the virtues of of Jaime. I forget where that was. It might have been in that ten year anniversary. That's uh, another one from... of those spectacular photos yeah. from the Dallas Fantasy Con. And we've heard stories about those. We've had panels in in comics journals and things. Uh, what a strange show that must have been. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a great picture. <laughs> and, you know, to this day, man, like, uh, you know, it's been a couple of years since I, since I was at a convention with Jaime, but pulls out a fucking wadded up notebook paper with the issues of, like, Archie and Dennis the Menace that, that he doesn't have that he needs, and, and that's what he's looking for. I wonder how big that collection is. You see it in photos sometimes, man, and it's like, you know, it's a couple of half boxes, like, in a, on a rack o over yonder. It's pretty interesting how this book goes about breaking up the material, too. Like, the idea of these different stages in his career. I kind of yeah. like seeing that. And, of course, Death of Speedy, one of the all-time great comics. This is one of those pages that, like, we should see the whole page, because, like, the top... Like, it was one of those real cool things where, like, the black of this fades into the black of this and then mm -hmm. the black of this fades into I think it's like a gas station or something if I remember right I, I think uh, Klaus owns that and there it is yeah dude like I say for my money as good a cover as exists so much so much going on here dude like the pivot of the feet like the weight distribution of that character the black of the pants going into the black of the nightclub absolutely and getting broken up by things like these hands or like a hand coming up there of the pool of of it's the layering thing of like the black and white on black and white the stuff that Mignola does you know it is so hard to do power and to have this amount of power like that is superhero language yeah applied to everyday life and then the spectacular within the everyday life of, of the stage presence and those boots yeah and this is of course one of the pieces that <laughs> Uh, Jaime brings to the game. I think this is the strip that was in World's Greatest Cartoonists Anthology, so like, I knew that one super, super well. What 
We've talked a lot about uh, the visual language. Oh, here we go. This is awesome. That's a small setup. Very humble. You know, like it don't doesn't need a lot of opulence. Doesn't need a lot of bells and whistles. And he says like half of those art tools he doesn't even use. Like like everybody, right? Yeah, like I mean, totally... I see a hole punch and a lot of it's just regular ass pencils. Yeah. Sharpies. We're going to get to those, uh, the tools that are used. But like, I remember talking, here we go. Like what a page, these kinds of pages are so important to me. Like just seeing like what is used. Yeah, man. Synthetic brush just to fill blacks. Keeps a cap on it. A little white out brush. The various exact rapidographs that he uses. And dude, uses them well, dude. Because like the rapido part is rubbed off. Yeah, has two of the green ones, I think, are the lettering. Or... It might be gray. Is yeah, that two different ones? But yeah, he has like one is for borders, one is for lettering. Yeah. This, uh, I love these pages when you see them in progress. This is an unused page, so maybe the progress was I'm done. But you'll see a lot of his in progress pages, and this is what they look like. Like he's inking all over the page, and he's even doing stuff that's like he's inking while other things are not put down in pencil yet. Yeah. That blows my mind that that can be done that way totally and he talks about it like like he'll he'll put pages down for a long time pick them up ink the fun parts save save the wax stuff for last like he's got a whole method and and when he explains the method if it wasn't jaime hernandez saying it it would sound like just like the just those guys the pothead on the couch talk that like has grand ideas and and accomplishes nothing the dude has been solidly working for 40 plus years. Yeah, and they look so simple at times. It really is is misleading. I think a big part of his process, man, is to pencil uh, and 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 let it stew for for, for a while. I just marvel at some of like look at that sky for just rendering with lines. Yeah, it looks like a photograph from here. <laughs> right. Uh, but yeah, like he, he'll draw it in pencil and then just let it be and then revisit it way later to see if like all the anatomy and stuff is right. He does he does place importance on that figure drawing for sure. This is one of those super cool things, man. Uh, Crumb has these too, like the, with Chuck, Chuck and Bob comics where it's comics that they did as kids. Mm -hmm. So like, let's do one a version like with modern skills what's crazy is like the whoosh and stuff like that lettering is the same lettering in like 11 rockets one yeah <laughs> yeah it always surprises me whenever you see any element from like a young age that translates and then look at this portman by isabella rubin so he had his own kayfabe uh staff or something on, in his comics it's from 1967 what a page that is man what a panel yeah This is one of those, I feel like, one of the famous images I always think of when I think of... Uh, it's, it's, just, it's the first issue that I bought off the, off the racks, man. I think Wig Wham Bam was my first book. Yeah. You got a trade? Mm -hmm. Some dialogue. That's another one. If you showed me that page and said, this is the writing process, I'd be like, yeah, I bet your <laughs> comics are garbage. Right. <laughs> or maybe I, you don't even get to the comic stage. Right. We've done a video on that. The Woe Nelly stuff really impresses me, and, and I've been through it a few different times in my life because of how different visually with the black and white spotting, you know, from, from the light sky to the black sky. Mm -hmm. And it just feels like if it's possible to simplify even more, he does it with this story. Right. Yeah, and even now, he's gotten even more kind of simple with things. And, he, and more cartoony. It's pretty freaking cool. Is that... Uh, the, oh, yeah, it is a chic. Yeah. We should look at Penny Century sometime. Because that would have been the follow-up when the first volume of Love and Rockets ended. Right, yes, it would. I can't remember if it's in color or not. But uh, I remember it being kind of a big deal. Like, that was stuff I was buying... Because I think I start buying pretty much after the series ends. Right. Yeah, more of that writing process. <laughs> yeah, dude. 
And this is the new stuff. This might be the um, the square format joints. I think that's right. Like the first volume of that. This is probably getting into some of the stuff that's in Queen of the Ring. Yeah. I like. I don't know about that in particular, but that body of work is so interesting to me. And I think it ran concurrently with a lot of this and was kind of secret because it's not in this book for the most part. Right. And, and he talks about fetish and stuff like that, like in, in the Queen of the Ring. How much does this look like animation? It really does, dude. The kind of smear of it, the the, the fuzz of it. it. Maybe it's like scanned from the actual comic book or something. It's got a lot of noise in it. I don't know what it is, but it's one of those things I would, uh, I'd would i be interested in duplicating. Yeah, I remember it was like, there was a... Was it a poster? I think it's a comic cover. That's one of the issues. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, maybe it is scanned from the printed piece. Do you think this was conscious or somebody found something that looks real close? I don't know. You know, it's a three quarter shot of a woman's head. Exactly. Like there's, you could probably, if you started looking, you could probably find thousands of right. those images. So I don't know. There it is, dude, drawn through. Mm -hmm. Very, oh. very light work. Uh, outside outside of comics you know re really he's built a nice bibliography of stuff that has been constantly in print for 40 years so he doesn't have to do so much outside work man these are all new yorker pieces also seems like he sells some art you know i see more of his pages than i do gilbert's mm. did the criterion gimmick also you were part of that wave yeah, there's there are, uh, is at least one book of like Criterion art, and it's so good. It's like so many of these artists that are just phenomenal, and then do a cover or two. Yeah, it's always fun to see this stuff, the mock-up colors. Yeah, man. And there's there a little go. bit of that the Queen of the Ring. That might be in that book. That's such a good piece. Oh, it's that's crazy. And I can't tell like how is he referencing stuff? That's what I'm wondering. Because there's so looks, much of the, the cartoony style right. of his. Yeah. The, the, but the lighting feels too right. He's just exceptional. <laughs> the fanboy in him. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to see a looser drawing because it's still all there. Absolutely, man. You see him do that stuff in, in uh, Comic Book Confidential when he's like reading his story and stuff, drawing those quick boots and shit. Fucking sick, man. Oh, dude, this is a famous page from um comic book artist magazine they did it was a, it was and they did the flip issues where the one side was uh the bros and then the other one was the cuberts mm. of uh that issue and and this exact page i remember seeing that in there that is such a weird pairing i feel like nobody's happy with both sides of that right <laughs> but i am <laughs> yeah it was made for me a bibliography and uh, sign out. Todd Hig Hignite working at uh, Heritage Auction House. Yeah, did that comic art magazine before that, and I think he was a retailer in St. Louis before that. Yeah, so, represents some people, a lot of, including uh, Jaime. A lot of comic comic art in that guy's resume. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic book, man. Around 2010. Yeah, these things are awesome. Makes me wonder what other books Abrams put out in this kind of like artist monograph model. I don't, I don't think, I don't think any. Uh, there's a, there's a Kirby one. There's the Klaus. There's this. Was the Kirby one Abrams? It's Abrams. Yeah. We should look at that sometime too. I don't think we've looked at that yet. I think we did. Yeah. The the hardcover joint. Did you do it with Tom? No, I think we did that. I think we did that, Jimmy. All right. You don't think so? I don't know. I don't remember it. <laughs> I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. It's gonna be that thing of where I'm mad at you if it turns out you did it with Tom. No, we'd never do something that you would want to be a part of with, with Tom. Good to go. I am. Okay, Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit the bell so that we can notify you when new vids are available. Cartoonist Kayfabe Comic Book Christmas in July is forthcoming. It is the last Saturday in July, and we need you to participate. What we're doing? Taking our doubles, taking our comp copies go into the free little lending libraries in our neighborhood and we are filling those libraries up with uh with comic books we're increasing comic book awareness and generating uh new comic book readers that way more than a thousand people participated last year 
and we want 10,000 or more to participate this year. The King Kayfabers on our Patreon are getting all these videos before anybody else. Got about three dozen people hanging out in the chat room. Uh, they get dibs on all the books we talk about before anybody else because uh, they, they get that, that exclusive access. But ultimately, the vids are brought to you by the books that we make. And uh, the Hip Hop Family Tree Omnibus is forthcoming. It's coming in October. Uh, just in time for the holiday season, collecting all of my Hip Hop Family Tree comics plus 140 pages of extras. The X Men Grand Design trade paperback is coming, uh, could, completing all of my, containing all of my X Men Grand Design works in one handy dandy trade paperback. Uh, one of those volumes is out of print, so this is your way to get it all in one clip. Red Room is my current focus. Two trade paperbacks of that out there in the wild. Crypto Killers is my latest season of Red Room Comics and the last uh, Wednesday of July, the third issue of Crypto Killers comes out or came out and that has a backup feature with uh, the proto version of my daily comic strip character. So make sure you get your hands on that. Jimmy, tell the people what books to expect in the future. Well, expect in the present right now, Hulk Grand Design Treasury Edition while supplies last, The Plain Janes and Street Angel Deadly Scroll Alive. Uh, are all available currently in print. So pick those up if you haven't already. The next book I'm putting out from Image Comics is Street Angel Princess of Poverty, which will be complete the set with uh, Street Angel Deadly Girl Alive. Together, these two books will reprint all of the Street Angel comics up to this date. And my latest self-published comic is True Crime Funnies. Has three nonfiction stories in there, two wrestling tales, and one about a... Uh, a very violent drug narc in his early days in the war on drugs. Uh, you can pick up the digital copies of this on my website, or you can read the entire thing on patreon.com slash Jim Rugg. The uh, hard copies are sold out, but a new printing is on its way soon if you can't wait. Tell people the, the other ways that they can support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel, Jimmy. Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, hats, Stickers and more at our spread shop. That link is also under this video. All good ways to support the channel, given those marching orders will be on our way. Make more comics.